Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name's Amanda. I am 36 years old. I am a mom of two. I've got a little girl, Quinn, who is two and a half, and my son Chase is four, and I make working mom content here on YouTube. I have a typical nine to five job. I work from home. I am a marketing manager for an engineering professional society, and I have about 14 years of experience in the marketing field, specifically on event marketing. So today I'm gonna to be sharing a Q&A. I asked y'all over on Instagram to send me your questions. So I'm gonna answer all of it. There are some personal questions about my marriage and living in Texas and about our family. And then there's work-related stuff, how to deal with burnout, how to manage everything in the household and make time for yourself, how to get up early, how to stay motivated throughout the day, and other stuff that are that's kind of YouTube-related, like how do I fit YouTube work into my schedule and if I'm doing anything to kind of advance my career? Do I like my job? So I will answer everything. Let's get some of the personal stuff out of the way. You can kind of get to know me a little bit more from some of these questions. So how did me and Pete meet? So Pete is my husband. I met him my senior year of college. I went to school at James Madison University in Virginia. One of my best friends from college, she actually used to work at a restaurant with Pete in their hometown. So my senior year of college, um, I had just broken up with a boyfriend of like three years, actually longer, of like four years. It was a long relationship, like a high school relationship. And um, he went to the same college as me. We broke up senior year. He actually ended up getting kicked out of school. Yeah, it was a big thing. So obviously I was like, no more of that. So my my best friend at college, she was sort of seeing this guy who went to Christopher Newport University. And so I decided to tag along. And so Pete, my husband, actually went to the same school as this guy. And I don't know how they knew each other. We end up staying with Pete at his house that he was renting there um, that's where he went to school and we kind of just like instantly clicked I felt like I had known him forever like we just I don't know there was a vibe between us I remember like just having this really fun banter back and forth with him and I felt like he was like the guy version of me we were just laughing have similar sense of humor like it was, it was just, I don't know, it was fake. Actually, it was funny because during that weekend, he, Pete had to actually leave school to go back home um, to do Greek Easter. So he was only there, I think like Friday night, and then he was supposed to leave Saturday and be gone for the weekend. I think he kind of felt the same like attraction and like just, I don't know, there was like an energy that was between us. And so he actually left to go to Greek Easter at his house back in Virginia, um, back in Northern Virginia. And then he left early and came back so that he could spend more time with me over the weekend. So I don't know, it was fate. I left that weekend being like, I'm gonna marry this guy. And then from there, we had a really rocky relationship. He went off to law school in Indiana. I went back to Jersey after college and started working in the city and we did long distance. It was horrendous. We broke up like 50 million times. I swear we were at like, saw each other at our absolute lows. But anyway, everything worked out and here we are today. The next one was, can you share any marital issues and how you got through it? So I would say that, you know, me and Pete bicker, but I don't, I, th I think our biggest marital issue is the lack of time that we have with just each other. And let me know, you know, any suggestions for this too, because it's really difficult. I mean, we both work full-time jobs. We've got little kids um, that, you know, require a lot of our attention and we wanna spend time as a family on the weekends and we do, but I feel like what's missing or what we've kind of 
put on the back burner is that like the closeness that we used to have before kids like you know we used to go out all the time we used to go out to dinners we would hang out like on the couch we would watch movies we would go to bars like we did all of that fun stuff and we loved it before we had kids and then i feel like once we had our kids things kind of changed i think that our top issue is just making sure that we're not just falling into like the roommate situation where all we do is just take care of kids and then have like a little time to ourselves every day and i know that that's so hard i mean working full time um and then having like a few hours in the evening after the kids go to bed it's like the last thing that i feel like either one of us wants to do is to like sit down and have a, an in-depth conversation with each other like how was your day and stuff like that so i feel like the time we have is on the weekends and um what we've been doing is our kids daycare has parents night out once a month so we drop the kids off on a Saturday and we usually go out to dinner either by ourselves or with our friends and that just gives us time to kind of reconnect. Uh, but it's definitely something that I, that me and Pete both have identified as not an issue but something that we want to work on in our relationship and i think it is really important just to like keep the spark alive and continue to date each other and you know prioritize our marriage another one was why did you move from new jersey to texas and do you plan on staying in texas so we moved to texas from new jersey because honestly the goals that we had for our lives like buying a house and starting a family it just was not it didn't seem feasible or it, to do that in new jersey would be bringing us down a path that we didn't want to take so i was working in new york city um, i was commuting four hours a day from like central jersey into new york city and we wanted to buy a house we wanted to start a family and everything in new jersey is just extremely expensive and on top of that no offense to people from new jersey i grew up there my entire life and i i love it but it is not a happy place like to compare people's attitudes and the way that they are in like the northeast to texas is night and day everything in my life in new jersey at that point me and pete had just gotten married was just extremely stressful i had a very stressful commute it was stressful you know working everything is super expensive in new jersey a house that we could afford would be a complete just like old like piece of crap everything would be outdated and we would have to put so much work into it and just like i don't know the vibe was not what we wanted for ourselves and for our family i we were both getting burnt out and we just needed a change like pete has moved around a lot in his life like prior to us getting married and he really thrives in different environments and i had literally spent aside from college all of my life in New Jersey and I just needed a change. I wanted a fresh start. So we moved to Texas. It turned out that Pete's company and my company both had offices in Texas and Houston. So we just kept our same jobs and we moved out here and we both started working remotely. It was a breath of fresh air to not have to commute into the city and to have that like stress of like angry, just angry people all the time. And living in texas the weather is so great it's warm it's sunny people are happy it's slower paced it's like very family oriented where we live and um it took me a while to get used to texas and i really wanted to move back to new jersey or out of texas for a good three years but now we couldn't be happier. We're staying here. We love it here. We would, we're gonna be here for the foreseeable future. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some like mom questions that I got. So what was the hardest transition from zero to one kid or from one to two? Hands down, one to two. Like it was the hardest thing. I It wasn't even imaginable for me at the time going from one to two i was like oh it can't it's not that bad like it can't it can't be that bad going from you know one to two 
I was completely wrong. It was so much harder than I anticipated, especially because my kids are 21 months apart. So when I had Quinn, Chase wasn't even two years old. So I had a newborn and I had a barely two year old and I had really bad like postpartum depression, not diagnosed, but just like, I was really, really sad. A lot of the time I was not motivated. I felt really just like not happy in my body. Quinn was kind of a difficult baby. She wanted to be held all the time. She would cry a lot. She would have these like, um, the witching hour as they call it in like the you know between dinner time and time to go to bed her witching hour lasted like an entire day it never stopped and we did everything like going in the car taking walks like you name it we tried it and it was hard so i would say that first year of quinn's life like was really really tough it like rocked our world it i was a complete disaster i was really you know in the dark space i couldn't get out of it like we have no help here so it was literally me and pete trying to juggle these two kids like it was it was difficult but honestly like time heals everything and you move on you get out of those tough phases and right now like at two and four i feel like i am back on track completely and you know everything nothing will stay the same so Hopefully that is helpful. Okay, let's switch gears and talk about some questions that I got related to work. So, do you like your job? Um, yes, I like my job. Do I love my job? No. Do I consider my job sometimes sort of like a means to an end? Yeah. Um, would, if I had all the money in the world, would I be doing what I'm doing in my nine to five job? Probably not. Um, but I, there are a lot of aspects that I really love about my job and that I am very grateful for. So I've been at my company for nine years now and I have been working from home or working remotely for like... I don't know, I guess like five out of those years. I think, yeah, we moved to Texas five years ago. So about five years I've been working remotely. So I would say that's like the best thing about my job is that I can work from home. Um, another like really nice thing about my job is that I started working in New York and moved to Texas. So I have a New York salary living in Texas and that is like probably unheard of and I don't think I will ever get that opportunity again. So that's really nice. I can't complain about that. Um, I work with some really great people. I have a very nice work-life balance. I feel like I've been at the company for a while, so I've kind of established, you know, a little bit of seniority. So I feel like people respect me, they rely on me. I get my stuff done you know, fairly quickly because I've been at the company, I know the systems, I know a lot of people that I work with. So it's nice to have those like personal relationships to kind of get things moving. My boss is great. She uh, is not a micromanager whatsoever. She's very hands off. Um, so I kind of do my own thing and then come to her with like problems or issues or road blockers instead of, you know, having to meet with her on a weekly basis and go through like, I'm working on this and give her a list of tasks. We don't do that. So that is really nice. Everyone's really supportive at work and the work that I do, there are things that I really love doing. I like I'm in marketing, so I do a lot of marketing toward engineering students, which is really cool. So we've got like student focused engineering events that we host that focus on like professional development. And then there's events that have engineering competitions. So those are really cool. Like the students will build a bike or build a robot and then compete against each other at these events for prizes. So there's a lot of really good stuff that I like about my job. There's some stuff that, you know, I don't like about my job. I, I not doing doing youtube has actually put a lot of things into perspective for me like i really love the flexibility that i have at my job but i feel like i like youtube because i have a creative outlet and i am working on my own kind of time and my own schedule and i'm doing something that i really love to do and being 
I, I, I wouldn't call, so YouTube is kind of like my, my side hustle or my side business. And I love everything about that aspect, like running your own thing, working with different brands, like a lot of that stuff is just so cool and I love it. And I feel like when you work for a company, you have to mold to like the corporate culture and you have to do things that the company says you have to do. You have goals and you have to go to meetings and you have to like do your work and you know, that's with any job. And I'm not complaining because I, I do really appreciate my job and I like my job and it can be a million times worse. But um, yeah, so overall, I like my job. I don't love my job. It is like kind of a means to an end. I am working at this job because I need to provide for my family. Do you feel pressure to be teams available for the entire work day and how do you deal with that? So. The thing that I really love about my company is that they've made a real push to get feedback from the employees and to create like a positive culture. And one of the things that my company has adopted, it's like this uninterrupted work time. So I think that especially after COVID and a lot of people started to work remotely, the culture kind of shifted to this like very zoom heavy or teams heavy or whatever your company uses um meeting heavy culture and this like you know you you get up and you go to work and you the lines between when you're working and when you're at home became very blurred i think for a lot of people me included and it's kind of built this like pressure that you always need to be available you always need to be on you always need to be checking your emails you always need to have your phone even when it's not within working hours and so i don't feel this way because our company has created these blocks of time on certain days of the week where it's uninterrupted work time you can't schedule meetings with people you can send emails but you don't you can't expect a response right away you shouldn't be sending zoom chats um, and if you do you shouldn't expect a response that is you know if it's within these block of hours so that's been really helpful there are mondays from like one to three and then on wednesday afternoon starting at noon until the end of the day so i feel like that's really helped my company and like the my my team and like other people that i work with to be respectful i also think people just have adopted like you know instead of calling out of the blue you send an im and say like hey are you available and then you know just using outlook and i i get a lot of like hey can we meet about this it's like yeah check my calendar make sure that you know you schedule in a time that i'm free i also like to schedule some like blocks of time in my calendar every day that i'm not actually in an, in a meeting but they're just like work time so that people aren't interrupting me and people don't put meetings on my calendar so i can actually get stuff done so i i think it's like it's something that's like a company culture thing but I think it's also like you need to set boundaries and like you should talk to your boss or like your team and make sure that people are respecting your time. So that's that. How do you deal with the afternoon slump? That's an easy one. I usually make a cold brew or I'll have a Celsius or I'll just like take time away from my computer and you know do something around the house that gives my mind a break so that I feel like I can come back to work refreshed a little bit so you know i'll like unload the dishwasher or i'll fold clothes or i'll clean the bathroom really quick something like that to kind of like you know put myself in a different mental place instead of sitting in front of the computer all the time how do you deal with burnout especially when working from home this is a really great great question and I definitely experience burnout it's it's i feel like i'm in a little bit of a I don't know, more prone to burnout situation because not only am I working full time and then taking care of my kids um, and like having a personal life, I'm also doing YouTube on the side and I love YouTube, that's why I do it. But that comes with another set of work. Editing videos takes a very long time. It could take, you know, on the short end, two hours or up to six, depending on what kind of video style it is. So I do get into phases where I feel very burnt out, especially if I'm in a very 
intense work, like my nine to five job, if that's really intense, I tend to like slack on all the other things. And it's, it's, it's hard for me to kind of like shut my brain off at the end of the day, especially when I am in like a very busy work season, which I am right now. But to deal with burnout, I stop doing things that cause me stress that's outside of work. So I will not put pressure on myself to make a YouTube video that week or to edit a YouTube video that week. I will take time to do things that I love, like it's running out to Starbucks on an afternoon where I'm like really burnt out, that'll make me happy, I'll do that. Taking a walk, meditating. I have, I occasionally, when I feel very burnt out and my mind is racing, I feel like that's when I need to meditate, but I wanna make meditation more of like a, a daily thing or a, a, a habit that I do because I really feel like it does quiet my mind, put myself in a more positive space and allow myself to kind of detach from all of the chaos that I feel like is sur surrounding me and to just like kind of ground and reassure myself that everything's okay. Everything is always working out. Everything is okay. The stressful moment will pass. And stress is like, I feel a lot of it is in our own heads and we create it. Like things are, situations are just situations. It's what we attach in terms of like feelings and emotions, what we attach to them is what like tends to make them spiral. So if I think, and this happens to me all the time. And I've I've actually been dealing with a situation at work. I've got this event that's going on and I'm working with a team um, under very tight timelines and deadlines and working with a person who is outside of my organization that doesn't understand the ins and outs and the, the time and the people that it takes inside my organization to get things done. So I, I could get an email and like, it'll just throw me off the hinges and it shouldn't because it's not a big deal like it, it's just not and a lot of things like nobody's like a, a brain surgeon here a lot of this stuff is just like it's really not a big a deal as you think it is and i i feel like when i start to tell myself that like put yourself outside of work and think of it from like a bird's eye view this is just a moment in time and it'll pass and it always does so those are some things that I do when I'm burnt out. I also absolutely ask my husband for help when I need it. So if I just have a really tough day and I'm like, I can't deal with the kids, I ask him like, hey, can you, when you get home, can you make dinner for them and give them a bath? I just need to like chill out by myself. And he is so helpful. And yeah, so I just like, I stop doing the things that are causing stress or taking up my time. And I like, I read a book. I make working out a priority because I love to do that I sit on the couch like watching mindless reality TV just makes me calm and it's something that I do to relax and that's what usually helps me with burnout but I know that it's a real thing and it's really tough at times okay so let's close out with two more questions work related someone asked how can you get into marketing and do you need a degree or are there crash courses so i think that if you're interested in marketing there's two ways i got a degree i went to you know a four-year university i got a bachelor's i actually didn't get a bachelor's in marketing i got a bachelor's in communications with a minor in pr and i just ended up in marketing so if you want like a salary position and you have no marketing experience and you don't have like a four-year college degree I think that you probably would have to start at like you know a marketing administrator role or a marketing assistant role and you probably need to take some sort of like courses there are courses for literally everything out there so unless if you're not trying to go back to school and get a degree there are tons and tons of online courses that you can take in marketing and you just have to do a Google search and find them. But that said, like, I think there is some, sometimes there's some confusion about like people that work from home and people think that, you know, you don't necessarily, like, I think there are jobs out there that you don't need a degree to do, to like work from home and they are more probably administrative. But the job that I have, like I used to work in an office and everything like that, it's like a, a 
you know, a typical like office type of corporate job. So I, you know, there are jobs out there that like you work from home and you can be like, you know, virtual assistant or, you know, it's, it's more like administrative or task oriented stuff. My job is a little bit different than that. I'm a, a manager, so I deal with like marketing strategies and like a lot of collaboration things like that it's also very analytical marketing people don't know that there's a lot of numbers that go in into it there's a lot of data and like back-end analytics that you need to know to like track marketing campaigns a lot of stuff is actually like ties into the things that i do on youtube which is cool are you doing something to develop your career if so how are you managing your time so i'm not doing anything to advance my corporate nine to five job career because i like i said before my job is like a means to an end it's a way to make money and what i'm doing to advance my career like i think there's a difference between a job and a career my nine to five is a job my career i feel like a career is something that you're passionate about and that you want to excel in and you want to do more of well i would say that what i'm doing is youtube and that's advancing my career i i think there's so much opportunity that is out there that's related to YouTube, content creation, influencer marketing, brand sponsorships, affiliate marketing. Like there's so many opportunities that are related to social media and being like digital content creators that that's where I'm going. So what I'm spending my time on is not to like, you know, move up in the ranks in my company. I do not want to do that. And I want to get out of corporate America. Like I really do. I want to do my own thing. I want YouTube to be like a bigger part of my life. So that is what I'm doing. I had a few questions that are related to YouTube and since we just started talking about that, I'm just gonna go into that really quick. When do you do your YouTube editing? So like I mentioned before, actually filming the videos does not take that much time. You know, it's just setting up a camera and pressing record for the most part, moving the camera around, getting different angles, that kind of thing. That doesn't necessarily take a lot of time, especially when I'm just filming my day. What does take time is editing my videos and it can take anywhere from like two hours, which is the quickest that I've done one, to like six. Editing myself, talking, adding music to videos, doing voiceovers, like that's a lot of work. And so I, I have summer Fridays at my job right now and so I get off work at one and so I usually take my Friday, This it's Friday right now, that's why I'm recording a video, I have time to do it now that I'm off work. I tend to edit my videos on Friday afternoons and then usually on the weekend during my kids nap time. So on Saturdays and Sundays, my kids take like two to three hour naps. And during that time, I edit my videos. Occasionally, I will edit a video like in short little spurts for maybe like a half an hour before I go to bed or something like that. But I try not to do that. So yeah, it's a, it is a balancing act and it is time consuming, but I love it and I will continue to do it. And I love you guys. I could not like thank you more for like, you guys are my motivation. I've actually got a lot of comments about people saying that they want to start making, start a YouTube channel, start making videos. And this one said, I'm afraid of the creeps. How do you deal with the creeps? I want to start a YouTube channel. Don't worry about the creeps at all. There aren't that many out there. And if you're making content that is not for like, I would say a male audience, you're not gonna get creeps. The majority of, you get one every so often, like a, a weird creepy you know, comment or something like that, and you just delete them. I wouldn't be afraid of that at all. I wouldn't be afraid of criticism because you have to remember that the, the feedback that you're getting when you put out a YouTube video or something like that on social media, 99% of what I get on my videos and stuff like that is positive and helpful and enthusiastic and moms, working moms, uplifting other moms and sharing their experiences. And that completely outweighs the like tiny, maybe 1% of negative comments that you get. And 
every day I tell myself if I get a comment like that, this is a stranger on the internet. You don't know me. Judge me all you want, honestly. I couldn't care less. And um, a lot of, some of the feedback is really instructive from you guys, telling me things that you like, things that you know you wanna hear more about. I love this community that we've built here. It's amazing. And if you are interested in starting a channel, you just have to do it. You have to say, I, I'm gonna make a video and put it out there and not be too hard on yourself. I have a video, the first one that I posted on my channel, it's so cringy and it's so embarrassing. You have to start somewhere and you can't get better unless you have a benchmark or a starting point or a baseline. So the reward of doing YouTube for me is just, it, I am passionate about it and I love it. So if you wanna start a YouTube channel or start making content on any sort of social platform, do it, go for it, do what makes you happy and then like everything else will just fall into place at least that's been my experience because if i listen to people that told me this is so stupid i can't believe you're making videos blah 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 putting yourself out on the internet if i listen to all those comments i wouldn't be sitting here today and i wouldn't have all of y'all and this amazing working mom community here being so supportive wouldn't change a thing no regrets Okay, so this video is getting super long, so I think I am just going to end it here and make a part two. So thank you guys so much for submitting your questions to me. Move on to the next part two, and we'll go and touch on some of the other things that I mentioned as part of the next section.